What's going on you lot? What are you saying? So today I thought I'd just sit down and pick apart my top five, it's actually six, favourite shots that I've ever got with the Zion Crane. Right, so to kick things off, we're gonna take it right back to Vietnam 2017. So the shot I've picked here is a shot in Ho Chi Minh City, and we managed to capture this very traditional Vietnamese woman carrying a load of plates. It looks like a load of plates anyway, I'm looking at it here. But anyway, this shot was achieved with the Zion Crane 1, like the very original Zion Crane, the first one, the, the numero uno. So I shot this with the Sony RX100 Mark IV. A lot of people think that I shot that entire video on the Sony A7S II, but this particular shot was actually on the RX100 Mark IV. Now the thing that I really like about this shot is just the way that we managed to frame her almost in the center of frame. She goes off to the certain sides at times, but who cares? And the best thing was the foreground, right? So there was loads of action, loads of ambience going on in the foreground whilst we were actually focusing and tracking her. This just really like showed the environment. It showed like her in her environment and it showed like the ambience around. I really felt like with this shot, we were actually sticking with her and almost like following her through her day and I feel like just being in her environment is just so awesome to like step into that space, step into like her moment and like feel that with her. Sounds a bit weird, but it's the way I think about things. So I was following her for quite a bit. She didn't actually know that I was filming her, which was a good thing because it just looked proper, proper natural. And yeah, we've got all of this stuff going on in the foreground, which I just loved about this shot. I really felt that there's like a true story behind this woman, even though we don't know anything about her. All we know is what she looks like, how she's walking, what she's carrying and her environment. And I feel like walking with her, we are actually following her throughout her day. So I actually shot this from quite a few different angles and this particular shot here, I loved. So we went past this little cart that was carrying a load of like materials. I don't quite know what. Then we was focusing on her. Then this geezer with this guitar come past. I couldn't believe my luck. So then I just panned onto him and tracked with him all the way along. And it was like a really nice like differentiating shot going from tracking her to then tracking someone else in the same shot. It was like really nice and natural, but obviously I didn't plan that or set that up. I just kind of felt the shot out and thought, oh shit, like he looks cool, let's follow him. So yeah, that was the first shot. So the next shot I've got in mind is the shoot that I done with Matram Sport with boxer Ricky Burns. Now the particular shot I've got in mind that I absolutely just love is this really slow tracking shot towards him as he's hitting the bag. I really like how like we start black and then we slowly introduce the scene, almost like we're coming out from the shadows, like we're kind of emerging from the shadows of that dark dungeon gym. It's just a really, really simple shot and it introduces the scene nicely, nice and slow, but we've also obviously got that fierce movement from Ricky and obviously the sound which just makes it super intense. I also love the fact that we kind of brush past one of the boxing gloves on the wall this just kind of like gives us a bit of an idea of like our environment, where we are and what the actual scene is about. I really like how when we start, we actually get this kind of double perspective where we're seeing Ricky hit the bag on the right and we also see him in the mirror on the left. I'm just a really big fan of like slow establishing shots. It's kind of what I do on most of my films. I don't know, I just really like to introduce the shot with like a nice long tracking shot. I do it all the time. But yeah, this particular one was easily one of my favorites. So for this particular shot, I was using the Zion Crane version one again. Um, yeah, I actually used the version one for quite a lot of these shots. I had the version one for ages before I got the Crane 2. Haven't really used the V2 that much, um, but I'm gonna be using it a lot more now. But yeah, Crane 1, still sick. 
Now the next shot that I've got in mind was shot with the Crane 2. And that is the shoot that I've done with Pover Blanc in London. Now the particular shot I'm thinking of, if you've already seen the film, you probably know what one I'm on about. It's the zip shot where Josh actually unzips the jacket. When you watch the film, you can kind of tell that that shot was actually made for that track. So I listened to the track before we'd done the shoot and I kind of made that shot up in my head before we'd done the shoot. So it was already planned and I knew that was a shot that I really wanted to get, but it just come off exactly how I wanted it to, so I was buzzing. So this shot actually took me and Josh about 30 takes. I wasn't gonna leave until we got it right. And this is the shot that we eventually got right. So on the Crane 2, I was actually in the pan follow mode. I did not tilt at all. I literally just lowered the gimbal as I span around his body. So Josh was stationary and I decided I wanted to actually circle my way around him. And as I was doing that, I was following the zip going all the way down. So the movement was kind of like come around him and down at the same time and follow the hand and follow the zip the entire time. I was really kind of happy with how this pulled off. It was really dynamic, a little bit original, just not the kind of shot that you see every day. So I was really, really happy with that one. Naughty little shot. So next up is my establishing shot for my India video. Now I was actually out in India to shoot with the Crane 2. So yes, this was shot on the Crane 2 and it was actually in the pan follow mode. But in this particular shot, you will see there's a little cheeky tilt in it. So as I said, I really, really like to start with long tracking establishing shots to kind of open up my scene. And with this particular shot, I just loved how we framed this shot. I literally just see this Indian geezer there and I was like, look mate, any chance I can quickly get a quick shot of you? And at first it was a bit like, nah, but he asked me for a picture. Don't know why, must be the 10K subs and that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyway, eventually got him to stand there and literally just look out of this window and all I'd done was pushed in on him and out through that window. It kind of sets the scene. We've got this Indian geezer and we've also got this really nice rustic wall. And I think the colors really represent India as well. They're really, really saturated. We've got the blue from his shirt and we've obviously got the orange of the wall. These two colors obviously contrast really nicely. Now the main reason that I love this shot is just the fact that as we push past him, we've kind of already got a theme of the video. We've got this Indian geezer and we've kind of got this whole Indian scene. Then as we push through him and push past him, we slowly tilt down and as we go through this window, it reveals India. And this was like my big reveal of India. This is where I revealed where I was and the subject of the film. So obviously, as you can see, as we push through, I do tilt down on the joystick of the gimbal. This just allowing me to like reframe the shot as I go through. And I like how we kind of go through and look down because it's kind of like we're looking down on this incredible vastness of space. This particular place was Jaipur and it was my introduction to India. So the next shot on my favorite gimbal shot list is this shot here for these guys here. So anyway, I was here at Adidas for the entire day with creative players. So this particular shot was easily my favorite shot from this entire shoot, and I was on the gimbal all day long. So I was actually shooting with the Crane V1, and I was shooting in inverted mode. Inverted mode is like easily my favorite way to shoot. I just feel like I've got a lot more control over the camera and I can hold it a bit more steadily and let my body take all of the movement. What I like most about this shot is where we start really, really low and we can see the ground moving below us. It's almost like this whole shot is like warped. So as you can see, I started straight on with this big sign and flags. And as I got closer and closer and closer, the camera slowly started to tilt up. This is kind of a technical shot because I started really low, tracked forward, and then I started tracking off to the left and tilting up at the same time. So we've got a track, a pan, and a tilt in the same shot. So this is like kind of a hard shot. So this is probably why I'm really, really happy with it. Essentially, what I wanted to do with this shot was just make this big sign, this brand, look as grand and in like large as possible. I wanted to kind of make it like larger than life. So by tracking towards and slowly tilting up, when you look up at something from a low angle, it makes whatever you're looking at look more authoritative, right? So that's why I wanted to stay low and look up at it. 
Because that's what a low angle does. It kind of like makes the subject look more authoritative, make them look in power, make them look bigger. So yeah, that's what I wanted to do with that shot. And because there's like the track, the pan, and the tilt all in one, then yeah, this is probably why I've stuck it up there with my top five, six, whatever that I've done with a gimbal. Oh yeah, and just for the record, it was in the pan follow mode. So obviously I was tracking forwards, then panning to the right and tilting up on the joystick. Did that make sense? And lastly, we're gonna go straight back to Vietnam. So the particular shot that I've got in mind was taken in a tiny little fishing village just north of Nha Trang. Now this particular village has a tiny population of about 250 people. So there's absolutely no tourists there. We were like the only people there and we had eyes on us. Everyone was just like, who the hell are these people? I had cameras, I had my gimbal, it was like a bit crazy. Anyway, the community feel in this village was just incredible. It was electric. Now the cool thing about this village was in the evening, everyone in the village comes down to the beach and all of the kids play in the sea. And it's just a really like cool dynamic. Like this is what they do in their spare time. Whereas us lot, we're just constantly stuck on our phones. These kids just go out there and they just have a wicked time in the sea. It's a really social environment and everyone just comes together. It was just really, really nice. Anyway, I got tons and tons of gimbal shots at this scene, but there's one that sticks out to me the most. And that is this particular shot here. My son, he makes me shine like diamonds. Will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? Now, as you can see, we start off with this really, really nice frame with this woman sitting on the right hand side. So we can kind of already tell like what kind of state she's in. Like she's obviously sitting there on the beach. She might be taking in what she's seeing. She's obviously soaking up the environment, soaking up the moment. So as we push past her, we reveal this child. And this particular child was actually that woman's child. And it's really nice how we push past and it almost feels like we've got the mama bear on the right hand side of the frame. And she's kind of looking out for her child. And that was like exactly what I wanted from this shot. And we don't just show the kid, we show the kid in his environment. We show the kid super relaxed, super happy, jumping and playing in the sea. And it's just such a nice little scene. So again, as we push past her, we just reveal this environment. We reveal the fishing boats, we reveal the sunset, the sky. It's just a beautiful, beautiful image. And it's just really relaxing and tranquil. But I just think the way that we push past the mama bear, that one shot has got a story in it, right? We've got the mama bear on the right hand side. We've got the kid playing. The mama bear is looking out for the child, right? And the child is just super, super happy. And to kind of build a story in one shot that's only about six seconds long, I just feel like I hit the jackpot there. That's great. That's all I, that's all I ever try and do with any of my shots. Just try and tell a story in one little shot. And I feel like I kind of done it there. So yeah, that is why I stuck that one right at the end. So again, that particular shot was shot with the Crane version one. And that was literally just in the pan follow mode in inverted mode. So yeah. So that's it people. I hope you enjoyed that little overview of my favorite shots with a crane. What I want you to do is comment what your favorite shot was and why. I didn't really stick these in any particular order because I wanted to find out what you lot are thinking and what you liked because this is all subjective, right? I might like one particular shot and you might go, nah mate, that was gas, that was crap. And I might be like, nah mate, nah, that was sick. So yeah, that's why I wanna like find out what you lot think, bang it in the comments, and we'll have a bit of fun down there. But I want you to tell me why it's your favorite shot. Also people, if you haven't already entered, go over to the search and create Instagram because you could win a gimbal. Yes, that's legit, it's true. Anyway people, thank you very, very much for watching. Have a sick week, and I will catch you very soon. Peace.